In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord. It's hard to believe, but here we are again, the last Sunday in our church's liturgical year. And it always closes with the solemnity of Christ the King. Just like the changing fall colors, the church changes too. Last Sunday's green gives way to today's white of joy and triumph. And next Sunday's purple ushers in a new liturgical year with the season of Advent and the expectation of the coming birth of the little baby Jesus. The Sunday also marks the end of the Jubilee year of divine mercy proclaimed by Pope Francis. It was intended to help all Catholics turn their eyes of faith to Jesus, who is the incarnate face of God's mercy. As our Holy Father said, do not forget that God forgives all, and God forgives always. Let us never tire of asking forgiveness. And today's solemnity of Christ the King is helping to aid us in that walk of faith with Jesus, helping us remember that his kingdom is here now and is for us as we kneel to worship him. All throughout his public ministry, he spoke about the kingdom of God without precisely identifying who the king was. It was only on the last days of his earthly life that Jesus lets out the great secret. Bound and brought before Pilate, he doesn't deny it. When Pilate asks if he's a king, Jesus replies, you say so. He knows his eternal kingship will be revealed to the world through his passion, death, and his resurrection. And it was for these that he'd come to us. Our Lord is focused on a much greater kingdom than what anyone expected. A gift to all of humanity so much greater. In today's gospel, Jesus also acknowledges his kingship in a most poignant way from the cross. Now even his disciples have fled him. He's been rejected, abandoned, and crucified, hung between two thieves. Armed to the teeth, they ruthlessly attacked travelers and left them for dead, just like the man in the parable of the Good Samaritan. A thief in Jesus' day was feared and despised, and the Romans gained public favor by bringing them to justice. Now our Lord is crucified between two of these men, and to the crowd he's guilty by association. But Christ hung there for a reason. He hung there for you and for me and for all of humanity. So to Jesus, they're not criminals, but men with eternal souls and worthy of his love. One is hardened and embittered and chooses an eternity apart from his king. But the other has an amazing conversion, accepting his guilt and the consequences for his actions. Then he makes his eternally life-changing act of faith. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Condemned in his life ebbing away, this thief doesn't see just another dying man. He understands that Jesus isn't an imposter, but truly ruler of the true kingdom that belongs to the Messiah. He believes his words a prayer of faith as he asks for citizenship in his kingdom. This man of most awful deeds finds salvation through his faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus, remember me. And our Savior, burdened by the unfathomable stain and the infinite weight of the sins of the whole human race, yours, mine, and all of humanity's past, present, and future that he came to lay upon his shoulders, still he responds with divine mercy. Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. And our good shepherd king takes this soul too upon his shoulders and into his heavenly kingdom. My friends, as this year of divine mercy comes to a close, can there be a better way than with our gospel's compassionate and forgiving image of our powerfully merciful king before us? So we end this liturgical year spent with St. Luke, and we look forward to St. Matthew's gospel, which will fill us in the coming one. But we also end it with an absolute certainty that Truly, truly, every single one of our years is a year of mercy as we always point ourselves with 
with hope and abiding faith in our sa to our Savior King, Christ Jesus. And we pray too, Jesus, remember me. No matter how badly we may have messed things up, and despite any pain we may be struggling through, our Lord always offers us the hope of a new beginning. We can come to him in confident faith. Jesus, have mercy on me. As we lay our heads down on our pillows for the sleep that will inevitably claim us each night, we can surrender ourselves to his care. Jesus, remember me. Each morning's waking is like a new birth as we're graced with the gift of another day to renew our faith and our walk with the Savior. And we can say, Jesus, have mercy on me. We gather together in grateful worship of God our Father for the saving gift of his Son. And each of us bows our heads in thanks. Jesus, remember me. Then we come forward in faith to personally receive him, our outstretched hands laid one upon the other, forming a throne down into which our Lord and King inclines himself, as we physically join with him and he with us. And in our hearts, we know with certainty that he hears us as we pray, Jesus, my Savior and our King, have mercy on us and on the whole world. <laughs> 